hear that? I think so. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. And I'm Diego Perez, and welcome to this episode of the NN Update. Congrats to our camera crew who were lucky enough to capture the elusive Bigfoot in her natural habitat. I'm sure Bigfoot, as a single lady, received lots of flowers on Valentine's Day. Our very own reporter, Diego, headed over to Derby Flowers to learn more about the art of crafting floral arrangements for ladies like Bigfoot. From local grocery stores to professional florists, Americans buy about 10 million flowers every day. To its beloved customers, Derby Farm Flowers and Gardens has been a flower vendor of choice since their opening in 1999. Owners Lucinda Crislip and Sonia Lackey have owned the business since 2019 and have worked day in and day out honing the art of floristry. They're just beautiful, right? They just add beauty to, I guess, the mundane or the everyday, right? It's hard to not smile or not feel, I don't know, a warmth of what nature brings when you look at flowers. I am still a florist because it just brings me so, so much fulfillment. When I left my corporate job, I wasn't making the same amount of money as I was before, but I was happy. I was so happy. Surrounded by stems and stamens, these dedicated florists have to work around the clock. Waking up before the crack of dawn at 4.30 in the morning and making a daily commute to Chelsea in order to stock up on flowers at the New England Flower Exchange, where flowers close to home and from far overseas meet. I have to go to the flower market and I'm there for about an hour, an hour and a half. I pick out the flowers that I think I need for the shop and I have to buy for two shops now. And then we have to process the flowers, that means taking off leaves and, and all of the thorns and all of that stuff. Then we start making the orders. But there's a lot of other parts that go into the logistical, getting people's arrangements to them, whether it's delivery or pickup and um, timing and, and all those sort of things is the day in the life of a flower shop. Beyond being a local flower vendor, Derby is also part of the Slow Flower Movement, which aims to promote locally grown flowers over those shipped from abroad. Supporting local farms is kind of the commitment that we make as being part of the Slow Flower Movement. It's not necessarily easy, especially in New England where there is a shorter growing season with the long winters, but we definitely do make that commitment to try our best to, to source local when we can. Following through on their commitment to floristry, Sonia and Lucinda kept Derby running and delivering during the pandemic. Even though florists weren't considered essential workers, they stepped up to provide with what they knew best. It was the only way people could connect. They couldn't go to their grandmother's birthday party. They couldn't go see their mom. They couldn't, you know what I mean? So people, the only way people could connect was through flowers. To Sonia and Lucinda, flowers are more than a gift given during the holidays or big events. To them, flowers make the world more beautiful and connect people together. I guess flowers mean, uh, they remind me of life, you know, birth and living and, and then dying, you know, and but it's a beautiful way of rem reminding you about life and how short it is because flowers, you know, they're beautiful for a short period of time and then they're gone like people. From the gift of an arrangement and the birth of a child to the toss of a wedding bouquet, flowers are essential. For NNTV, this is Diego Perez. It's amazing.
amazing how flowers have the power to brighten up our day and add a touch of beauty to any space. Here at Newton North, there's someone adding a lot of joy to the lunch line. Matt Delaney's new system is making lunch easier and tastier. To hear more, let's turn it over to reporter Ruby Metcalf, who got a taste of the lunchroom's secret ingredient. Beginning in January, when students enter the cafeteria to collect their lunch, they may notice some improvements to the quality, variety, and speed of the food available to them. The mastermind right, behind check, these check. changes, Can Matt Delaney, is on a mission to make school meals better. There was lots of um, room for improvement, lots of opportunities to, um, to grow the team. Um, you know, the food was really good to start with. Um, I just needed to tweak it to make it what I think the kids are really looking for. Uh, we want hot, fresh, nice variety, looking good, feeling good. Matt has experience making cafeterias and restaurants more efficient and higher quality all across the country. 20 plus years ago, um, I worked at Walt Disney World. Um, I ran restaurants all around Epcot, a fantastic part of my life. And after Disney World, I worked for the Cheesecake Factory, uh, managed restaurants in the Midwest. Delaney is now working as the general manager of food service for Whitson's, the company in charge of the cafeteria here at North. Alongside him are senior Gabriel Grove and junior Will Pryor, who have joined Delaney as a project for their leadership class. You try to find something that is wrong with um, our community or something that you want to improve with our community. And the cafeteria was a bit of an epiphany when my friend and I, Will, we were standing in line, we were like, this sucks. We were like, why don't we do something about it? This epiphany came soon after Whitson's had hired Delaney. Gabe and Will approached Matt with their ideas. He was very energetic. It seemed like he was very excited to do new things because I think he saw the way that you know, it had been running in the past and I don't know if he was satisfied with it, which was good because neither were we. The team came up with various goals for the lunchroom this year. Students might have noticed new vending machines, a new efficient line system, and more options. Lunches are free, so let's take advantage of it and let's make it the best that it can be. With the gates opening earlier and several more checkout lines, Delaney hopes to increase the number of lunches served during the short lunch blocks. We run around to see if students notice the faster lines and increased food quality. I think there's more options from what I can see and like just more variety. There's less of like a clump in the lines and stuff and I feel like everything goes by like more smooth. Recently when they added that soup, it was, it was pretty good. Another big goal for the team is tackling sustainability efforts. Spearheaded by the Sustainable Development Club, the cafeteria is instituting reusable containers through Recyclable, an organization working with restaurants and schools. Each thing does take some time, and I hope it shows in the food and with the service and hospitality that my team is able to, to uh, put forward. Look out for more information about Recyclable, composting efforts, and more from Delaney and his team. From NNTV, this is Ruby Metcalf. Well, that looks delicious. I definitely will be grabbing a cup of soup today. Matt is really improving the community here at North. Similarly, for the past 50 years, Paul Arpino has been making a difference at Our Lady's Help of Christians Parish. I had the pleasure of learning all about his legacy. The Our Lady's Help of Christians Adult and Youth Choir enhances every Mass. This musical group's success is a reflection of the 50 years of hard work from its director, Paul Arpino. Paul sang in the Our Ladies Boy Choir and Youth Glee Club before he joined the adult choir at 16. He had no professional music training to prepare him for the role as director, but his easygoing demeanor made him the perfect choice. Now, you have to understand that they had to be very desperate for me, for them to ask me to get up there and do that. So Martha spoke right up and said, Paul, get up there and direct us. She was the mother of 12 children. And when a mother of 12 children tells you to do something, you do something. Paul was invited to lead the group every Sunday thereafter. With his leadership and charisma, the choir family grew and became the group that exists today. The first thing, when we ask people, hey, why don't you join the choir? Oh, I can't sing. Um, and, um, and to be honest with you, some of them really can't. We're all different. We all have different talents. We all have different gifts. And bringing them all together is what makes a beautiful family.
The relationships Paul has built with the choir members have blessed him in ways he could never have imagined. I actually asked him out the first time. Um, one Sunday after Christmas, I said, you know, maybe we should, we should go out for a drink sometime. And then I, I went home and I said, oh, now I'm going to have to quit the choir. <laughs> I was very, um, very nervous about it. But he called me that night and asked me out to dinner. Paul and Ginny got married at Our Ladies 28 years ago, surrounded by the people who brought them together, their choir family. They have devoted their time to improving the lives of the singers and other parishioners. There, there, I have to admit, there are times that I say to myself, what am I doing this for? I remember one day I was getting out of work, came home, changed, got in the car, rushed over to church, and I, my mind was saying, what am I doing this for? Why, why are you doing this? And uh, I walked into church, and the first person I saw was my answer. That's why I'm doing it for, for the people, for the family, the community that we've built in that church. That is so wonderful. You know, we have conversations sometimes about, you know, the people in the choir and um, the difference they've made in our life and how they are family, essentially. And, you know, I think sometimes it just needs a gentle reminder that it's bigger than a job. I think it's a calling. And um, he's, I think, he, I personally think he's made a huge difference in so many people's lives. Paul is someone anyone can turn to for help, a hug, and a laugh. So many people count on him and, um, He's just, he's just a very special person who um, gives of himself. And um, I think we're all the better for um, having known him and being a part of his life. For NNTV, it's Isabella Dugan. Directing a choir for 50 years is an achievement on its own. But Paul's great success is his devotion to helping others. You're so right, Diego. That's all for this episode. If you have your own story to share, DM us on Instagram at New to North TV. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.